there is a great disparity in between the haves and the have-nots, that's for sure. You look at what's going on in the stock market, compare it to what's happening in the economy, and it's like two different worlds, all happening at the same time. The first thing I want to look at is what's going on with the economy. There's an economic fallout taking place today, and 2022 doesn't look like it's going to get much better. I want to break all that information down. The second thing I want to look at is commodities. We're going to look at a few. I'll give you some updates on that situation and what it means to you as an individual. And three, China's crisis is continuing to unfold, particularly in the property sector. I've got some brand new information just released. Let's begin. I believe this article says it all. Healthcare crisis, one in three are skipping vital medical care due to the cost. So it's not as if they don't want it. They want it, but they don't have the money. Now, part of the problem here is the simple fact that the costs have been driven up considerably over the last several years. That's never a good thing. When people want something and can't afford it, well then, we have to start looking at why that's the case. Sticker shock from medical bills is something many Americans are quite familiar with. Unfortunately, as this situation over the past two years drags on, the rising cost of medical care is causing one in three people to skip treatment altogether. Okay, they're just showing you here the medical bills are spiraling so far out of control that even 20% of the country's highest earners, those making $120,000 a year, say that the cost of seeing a doctor is keeping them from seeking treatment. I've told you before, look at the stats. If you live in San Francisco making over $100,000, you can actually qualify for help from the government for housing. If you make $300,000 in San Francisco, you may still be living paycheck to paycheck. Those are extreme examples. Depends on where you live and your certain circumstances and all that. But the point remains the same. It's that everybody is pushed to the absolute edge. Part of that could be the fact that people are spending too much money here or there. Maybe they don't need to do all these fancy things. But we can see that what has happened to the currency, the fiat currency being devalued considerably, oh, well then, it starts to paint the picture. Look at this article, okay? Really quickly, I want to cover this and move on. Americans have reached their breaking point. Between March and October, the percentage of people reporting trouble, paying their health care, skipping treatments, and not filling in their prescriptions spiked to their highest levels since the beginning of 2020, exacerbating another health threat born out of the cost rather than the illness. So it does cover this more. But just think about that. Think about how serious that is. It's not people buying the latest iPhone. They need to get the new trend. It has nothing to do with that. And so many of these people are living in a situation where they don't know what's going to happen next month, let alone next year. 2022 is going to be a very hard year for people. And that's so unfortunate. Look at what's happening with the markets. Over the last month, I mean, I could just show you this. If we look at the broad markets, take a look. You know, if I just pull up, this is the incorrect one. If I pull this up really quickly, just showing you the SPY, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the small caps being the Russell. Look what's happened. If I put my mouse, if you see that vertical line there on all these charts, that is just showing us over the last month. In fact, that is November 5th. Markets have not looked very well, very good over this last month. And what's going on here? We've got more money printed than ever before. We've got all of these things that have been happening. There's support there. What's going on? Well, the time has come that we are witnessing before our very eyes some changes, some changes to the central banking policy, a tightening like we saw in 2018, and a general 
economic trend of degrading, a degrading trend, not a good thing. This is on many different levels. You can't point to one statistic. You can't say it's because this case right here, the truck drivers, that's the problem. I noticed some people get confused. Some people get worked up about one particular thing. There's so much to it. Amid huge shortage, new truck drivers train for some of supply chain's toughest jobs. The tractor trailer lurches into gear. The student driver turns the wheel, swiveling left to right. They're talking about this, the rookie mistakes, and, and so on. It just goes on. It's telling kind of the story and essentially saying that much of the nation's $23 trillion economy rides in the back of trucks, such as this one in this particular story. And what's going on here? You've got critical points within the economy. And that's something simple as shipping and logistics that have been thrown really out the window today. And that's never a good sign. And right now we're seeing it come up like we have never seen before. Now, this is the biggest one for today. If you stuck with me, you're going to get big details. You got the economic aspects, right? You know what's happening there, right? And the Federal Reserve tells you that they are looking at the economy as their particular measures for when they make changes. That's what they tell you. That's what the talking points say. That's what those in the mainstream media repeat. And that's what the average trader, retail trader, constantly points to. The dual mandate, the so-called price stability and employment. That's the Federal Reserve's job, right? Okay. All right. You're with me on that? Check this out. Powell was asked at the recent press conference. Just, just look at this. This is the quote from Powell. So... On the first part of your question, which is, why not stop purchasing now? I would say just this. We, we have learned that we're, in dealing with balance sheet issues, we've learned that it's best to take a careful, sort of methodical approach to making adjustments, meaning printing less money. Markets can be sensitive to it. Boom, bombshell right there. And we thought that this was, this was a doubling of the speed will. We're basically two meetings away now from finishing the taper. And we thought that this was the appropriate way to go. And we announced it. And that's, that's what will happen. You can see me stumbling there. That's the way he said it because he's stumbling, trying not to say the wrong thing. But he said one very key point. Markets can be sensitive to it. And that is huge because the markets realize what has happened, the policy support. And as of November, when that meeting happened, the markets have not done well. Some stocks have done well. Sure, sure, we could see that. But the markets overall haven't done well because the support is leaving. That doesn't mean the market's going to crash. It just means that they're starting to realize, uh, okay, we, we got to change the way we're doing things. At the bottom, ECB executive Schnabel, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, warns that QE is inflating asset prices. Benefits of central bank bond buying program are fading while it may cause excessive risk taking. That is completely correct. And that's what we have seen all along. And it's interesting to see, you know, former governor of the Fed saying this, ECB executive saying this, and we've had so many examples previously too. Look at what's happening with interest rates. The 200-year history of U.S. real interest rates. There haven't been many cases in history where we've noticed that According to this, the U.S. 10-year real interest rate, treasury yield minus the CPI year over year, is actually in the negative significantly. This comes from Bank of America, but the data is there. Just look at that. What does it tell you? The 
the level of stimulation today is unlike anything we have seen before in history. Finally, gold responds just a little bit. Okay, 1807 for gold saying, all right, things are getting wacky. Markets aren't liking this. The economy's not doing so well. All right, a little bit of love, half a percentage. Who knows what's going to happen? It's been, this is the last year, these two charts for gold and silver. I mean, there's just weakness overall. I mean, it's, it hasn't been that bad, if you depending on how far you stretch it out. Actually, this was a six month. If I pull it back a year, it just seems like it's been around 1800 forever. The manipulation is real. Germany says no decision on Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline before July. So that means all throughout the winter, Europe is going to feel the cold. And that is unfortunate. Now, there's been some warmer weather in different places. But Europe, let me know. Let me know what's happening to you. Wherever you are, are you feeling the cold? Have the prices risen? I know for many, many, and I should say, have the prices come down from their peak? I should ask that question instead. Please let me know. Please let us know in the comments below. This is really key because we're always getting these you know, different statistics from different places. But this right here, having this online would potentially allow for some cheaper prices for energy. And unfortunately, looks like it's going to be several months away before a decision. Doesn't even mean it's going to be brought online. And then to turn to China. I mean, this situation with Evergrande and the property sector continues to be a problem. Okay. Money manager vanishes with $313 million from China Builder. So while it's not about Evergrande, it just seems like the whole, the entire sector is just rotten. Fortune Land, very funny, by the way, with the name, Fantasia for one name, Fortune Land for another, says it lost contact with money manager. Company has defaulted on a bond and shares have plunged. China Fortune Land Development Co. has said that it's been unable to get a hold of money manager they gave, that it gave $313 million for an investment. It's lost contact with China Create Capital. Create Capital out of thin air, maybe? Or is it disappear out of thin air? Unbelievable. It's a British Virgin Islands registered firm. Yes. Anyway, try to make some money. Try to bring in that capital to then repay investors, I'm sure. These Ponzi schemes falling apart. A little bit of a potential good news, I guess. Uh, Shimao bonds rally on regulator support, as well as there's an Evergrande update in here. We think government intervention may help alleviate market concerns on the margin, but it is not an indication of a government bailout for the sector. Remember that, not a bailout. We believe Shimao is a likely survivor and we continue to see the diversified strategy behind our basket trade is an appropriate way to participate in what is admittedly a high risk situation. That's right. Citigroup throws some money in and so they say, uh, you know, we have reasons for this. Sure. This is uh, all in line with the whole, um, you know, robots automation. Apparently Uber Eats and Mo uh, Motional are working on driverless food delivery for 2022. I don't know how this is ever going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, so far, not very promising. That's a whole different story. And then I wanted to leave you with this. Go in the description and check this out under the sources if you are interested. But the semiconductor supply chain visualized. Very, very cool. Okay, it's huge. I can't get through it all, but I would highly recommend checking it out. If you're interested in the supply chain as it relates to semiconductors, remember this is integral, whether we like it or not, within the entire economy, where things are moving, why we have problems today. I would take a look at this. If you want me to do an entire video about it, I can just break it down. That's totally up to you. You got to let me know, though. That's it. I'm going to leave it there. The economy right now today is in for a world of hurt. 2022, I mean, if we're tightening right now, especially as things are weakening, 
this is going to be an issue. Bank of England started to increase. I mean, there's been so many different central banks around the world that have started their tightening. And of course, that doesn't look good at this time. We will see what happens. I will cover all that information. Are you subscribed yet? If not, you got to just click that button. It's one button. Do that. It's right down below. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button to support this channel, I really do appreciate that very much. Okay, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It is very, very important because it notifies a whole bunch of people out there about the Money GPS that maybe have no idea about it, even though it's been 10 years on the channel. All right, remember, always be prepared. Always do what you think is best for yourself, for your family. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. All right, just click it and I'll see you there.